warm welcome to Joburg Today, where we bring you the 411 on what's hip and happening on your local streets of the City of Gold. I'm your host, Riley Saganiposakwe. Alex McNamara of the National Business Initiative came into studio to Joburg today to tell us a little bit more about why we've been experiencing dry taps and water restrictions in Johannesburg as of late. We need to be aware of the fact that we, our water availability is limited. Uh, we're also faced with a, with a warming climate over time. But then the more specific stuff is actually quite interesting. It's really just a combination of three factors. One is that we had a heat wave. The second is that we had very little rain. And thirdly, people were watering their gardens. That led to this kind of culmination where we had very limited supply in Joburg. And we had to move, obviously, to phase war, level one water restrictions and from there to level two water restrictions. So when you move to sort of stage two water restrictions, basically what it means is all of stage one applies, and that's effectively not to use water at certain times of the day for watering of gardens, uh, to avoid you know, using a hose pipe to water your car, so to wash your car, and basically generally conserving water wherever you can. The difference with stage two is that there's now pressure, pressure management that can be applied. And what that means is that, in, in essence, that there, there could be lower pressure that runs through the system. So you might find that when you put on the tap, there's just not quite as much water coming through. Although Alex considers the current situation as serious, he points out that it's not unusual. What we're dealing with in many ways is a natural climatic variability, which is known as the El Nino. And that means that often every 10 years we will have a drought in persistently hot, in sort of hot weather. And that's a natural sort of climatic event that we, we have to live with, basically. But on the other hand, we know that we waste a lot of water in this country, for example, and in Gauteng as well. So it's kind of a combination of understanding that there are natural factors that we're just dealing with, but that also we have quite serious issues we have to address. I think about 25% of the water in the city of Joburg is unaccounted for, which means it's lost through leaks or through, through just you know, poor billing or something like that. So like with much of the country, if we can sort out our, make sure our billing systems are accurate, if we can make sure we fix leaks and report them as quickly as possible, um, and account for all that water which is basically lost in the system, we'll, make, we'll go a very, very long way. So I wouldn't say it's a crisis. Um, in many ways, it's just dealing with a, a predicted series of events. But as long as we take sort of the right sort of remedial action, we should be, we should be okay. Both national and provincial governments have announced plans to deal with the countrywide drought. And a lot of the stuff that we know needs to be done, or is being done already, but it's just packaged for, for, for us to understand. So a lot of it's around water reuse. So if we do that, we will have a much more secure water future. Water conservation is another key aspect. So if we can save water, whether it be you know, through reducing leakage or whether it would just be better monitoring, we're, we'll be in a much better position. There are also some talks around you know, increasing tariffs during, water, during drought sort of periods. And that possibly is something we have to look at. Um, ultimately, a, a tariff is a way to send a price signal to people and to say, listen, water is becoming more scarce at this point in time, so you need to sort of manage your behavior and try and reduce water wherever you can. Uh, so a lot of it is actually, I think, is about the basics and getting the basics right. So the plans, I think, are, are very viable. We, if we look at the much broader scale, um, the supply option at the moment we're focusing on is the second phase of the Lesotho Highlands water project. We have actually have quite a good track record overall in being able to deliver water to, to the country. And I think there's a lot of emphasis now that this is a key risk we have to address, like we had to address electricity as well. So, whatever the current state of Johannesburg's water availability and supply, indications are going forward, all should use water much more sparingly. Marisa de Klerk, Joburg Today. My name is Shane, the Duke Wellington, also known as MC Dukey in the house, and you're watching Joe Berg Today. We love hearing from you, so do that favor and hit the like button on your Facebook. That's JoeBergToday.tv. Follow us on Twitter at JoeBergToday. And if you're one of those people who are constantly on the move, then you can catch us on PocketTV.mobi. That's Pocket with an I. The seventh biannual AfriCity Summit came to an end yesterday, bringing together people from all walks of life and all over the continent to identify their individuality, respect their views, and the contributions that they will make to make Africa a better continent. First of all, um, we confirm the resolve to keep local government of this continent united not avoid any division among us. Secondly, 
we say that we have a buy-in into Agenda 2063 and to the Sustainable Development Goals. But that they will be effective only if they are localized, because all business is local. Thirdly, we say we need to put out of this continent xenophobia, uh, discrimination, and all sorts of uh, hurdles that impede the development of this continent. And you heard the president of the African Union Commission saying that even an African Union passport is uh, envisioned so that people move freely across the continent. We all know that uh, Kwame Nkrumah said uh, Africa must unite or perish. So that must be something that uh, we hold dear in everything we do. Um, but secondly, local government is, a, is, is at the cold face, really, of uh, the improvement of people's lives. Um, national government is very important, provincial or regional government is very important, but local government is at the cold face. And Agenda 2063 is really about how to get Africa to become a prosperous, integrated, peaceful continent driven by its citizens and playing a dynamic role in the world. And there's no way we can achieve that without full involvement of local government. In many ways, we say in South Africa, local government in reality is where the rubber hits the road. The reality is that when we talk about sustainability in cities, when we talk about human settlements, when we talk about urbanization, when we talk about migration, when we talk about access to services, the responsibility lies with the local authority. It remains our duties to ensure that our people have access to water, sanitation, electricity, housing, and that we are able to facilitate local economic development. My name is Tony Pedd and you're watching Joburg Today. It all started with Mills student accommodation, and now we're seeing a shopping center rise, all thanks to shipping containers. We took a closer look at this very interesting venture. Innovation in architecture on another level. A new idea has been introduced, or should I rather say, shipped to South Africa. 27 Boxes is the first shopping center in the country built entirely on shipping containers. And of course, Johannesburg had to have the privilege. Melville has always been a artisanal, premium, creative zone in Melville. And if you look at Melville as you go through Melville, Melville is a, a real small little village. 27 actually represents the size of a 12 meter container. It's, it's not the number of units in, in the complex. Shipping containers is a, an item that you can erect very fast. Construction on the centre started on the 22nd of January 2015 and although 99% complete, shop owners have signed up to rent. I reside in the area in, in Auckland Park, so Melville is just down the road for me. And When I first saw the signs that came up, I thought initially, even just with the artist's impression, this is going to be a brilliant, brilliant concept. I know it's the only one in, uh, in South Africa and another one uh, maybe in London and in uh, New Zealand uh, and in Paris. The people are very excited to, to see when it's finished. Uh, the, the Melville people, uh, in a special way, they, they can't wait to come uh, and, uh, and have a look. And I think it uh, can be very nice uh, for, uh, for Johannesburg and uh, for Melville Place. Uh. We saw the, uh, the development. We also did a lot of printing for the outside of the development. And then, you know, we just saw that the whole concept is uh, you know, something completely different, something com completely new. 
And we just felt that, you know, it's a place that we have to have a shop in um, because of the, the uniqueness of the, of the whole project. Regardless of the material used for this shopping center, it is as warm as any other building. And anybody that builds a shipping container or just places a, a shipping container down for an office will obviously freeze or it will be very hot in summer. But it's, if you use it as a, a, a building method, then you have to insulate it and comply with building regulations. The temperature in here now is a lovely temperature. It's definitely not cold and we have no heaters in here at the moment. Now if you live around the city of Johannesburg, pop in for a unique and cozy experience with the 27 Boxes Shopping Centre. I'm Buitumela Ratagwena for Joburg Today. My name is Bongi Mezungu and you're watching Joburg Today. And that's all the time we have for you today, but be sure to check out our playlist to see what's happening in and around your beautiful city. That's it from me, Riley. I leave you with Janie Bay on my way. Enjoy. Back in ETV. Shadow cast cloud covered Lost all count My steps so lazy Memoirs left behind Wait You didn't hear my call Wait Oh heaven save me
You know I've said that I can't stand 